history. We're seeing a return to Victorian values playing out in front of us, and they were not all good. We're seeing executive pay rising and pay of ordinary workers being frozen and now capped. And with inflation rising, that means a, a pay cut. The RCN is absolutely clear in its message to government. These changes to the NHS pension are not necessary. They are not fair. They do not give a fair deal to the front line. And we do not want to see them take place. They're not necessary because at the moment, our members and everyone else that works in the NHS are contributing to the NHS pension scheme, as indeed are the employers. That money goes straight into the treasury pot, and the first call on that money is the payout to pensioners, people who have retired. The rest, two billion pounds a year, stays with the treasury for them to use. So this proposed increase, which by the way is not for um, anyone else except for those who are contributing to the pension scheme to pay, this proposed increase will increase that surplus, which the government can then use to pay off the deficit. Nurses did not create the banking crisis. Nurses did not create the economic conditions that we're in at the moment. The Royal College of Nursing does not see why nurses should be paying for the banker's deficit. The turnout today is absolutely fantastic and what it represents is two visions of this country. There's the vision of the government, the government of parasites, old Etonians, stockbrokers, PR representatives. <laughs> selfish and just look after themselves and there is our vision the vision of our society and of our labour movement a vision of standing together of building things of making things of helping each other our values of our movement are of solidarity of compassion and working together and those are the two different visions They've been giving us a nightly telling off, really. Michael Gove says the trade union and the leaders are itching for a fight. He must be confused. Perhaps he's preoccupied with a £20,000 expenses claim on luxury items to one of his luxury houses. Perhaps he's forgotten that we're striking because the government launched an attack on our pensions. We didn't pick the fight, and they picked the fight. Francis Moore, Francis Moore, uh, comes on the TV and says the same thing, that perhaps he's lost concentration. Maybe the £30,000 he claimed for two years for a luxury flat, two minutes walk from the luxury house that he already owned. Or maybe he's upset by the in excess of a thousand, uh, I beg your pardon, a uh, hundred thousand pounds expenses, which was turned down. Perhaps he's preoccupied with this and is equally confused about the causes of, uh, of this dispute. We've been told uh, off this week, repeatedly, they say our strike is going to cost jobs. What grass neck these liars actually have. They came in with plans to scrap well over a million public sector jobs. Their policies are choking whatever life there is out of the economy. Yesterday's economic statement, uh, autumn statement, says they're going to sack over 700,000 public sector workers. And they had the nerve to accuse us of putting jobs at risk. According to the Minister of State for Education, Michael Gove. He believes that when you cast your ballot for this dispute, you had some horrible trade unionists like Roger standing over your shoulder telling you how to vote, intimidating you. Is that the case? Well, we just can't afford it. Well, I'm sorry, but surely that's a matter of priorities. The, the government can find billions of pounds to, to go and bomb Libya for, for some bizarre reason. Yes. Or money to bail out banks. Yes. Or bail out the IMF. But we can't afford to look after people in their old age after they've worked for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Let me say, it's not fair. We 
we shouldn't get proper pensions because private sector pensions are poor. Private sector workers pay taxes, they say, for our pensions. Actually, taxes pay for all, uh, all pensions. All uh, pension schemes are supported by taxation. Private sector schemes, is, there's no question, are a complete scandal. They've been raided, they've been robbed by Cameron's friends. The employers and the finances, they've been robbed for years. The government asylum us. The richest 1% of private uh, sector pensions get 25% of tax relief on pensions. 1%, I repeat, 1% take 25% of all the tax relief. This is the unfairness in pensions. The richest part of our society are robbing the rest of us and the government are fully in support of that change. By the way, one reason why they want to uh, hold down public sector pensions is because uh, private companies who want to come in and take over the uh, public sector don't want to take over public sector uh, pensions. We've seen the biggest fall in average household incomes for 40 years. And we've seen the top directed salaries soaring. Last year by 55% they increased, this year they only increased by 40%. <laughs> the stupidity of the government, who know the price of everything and the value of nothing, is they don't understand that it won't even save any money. There is a very serious problem of pensioners living in ill health because of their poverty and therefore costing money to the National Health Service or to home care and social services when if they had a decent standard of living, enough heating, if they had decent clothes, if they had enough to eat, then we wouldn't have the problem. And we say pensions tested because this is not just a public sector issue. It's a question of the right to dignity in retirement for everyone, whether they work in the private sector or the public sector. And pension of poverty is a tremendous problem in this country. Scandalously, there are 2.5 million pensioners living in poverty in Britain, and that is a higher proportion of pensioners in poverty in Britain than in any major European country. The only countries in Europe with more pension of poverty are Cyprus, Latvia and Estonia. We stand as one of the richest countries in the world, but we have pension of poverty worse than Portugal, worse than Greece, worse than Lithuania, worse than Hungary. That is a scandal. And what we have to do is work to ensure that all pensioners have a right to dignity and a decent standard of living. The GMB has 300,000 members out today, the biggest strike in our union's history. But that's only half of our membership, because the other half are in the private sector. In the private sector, only one in three workers is in an employer got pension scheme. That is a scandalous reform which has is, which is taken place where people don't have a pension. They will be only reliant on the state when they retire. And yet, the richest 1% of directors of those private companies with their genuinely gold-plated pensions receive £10 billion a year from the Exchequer in tax reliefs on their pensions which pay up them hundreds of thousands of pounds. We have income inequality in pensions. That is a scandal. So listen to us, Mr Osborne. Come back to the negotiating table in a real way and negotiate fairly so that we get a fair deal for the front line. our message to this government, we will not tolerate you destroying the livelihoods and dignity of pensions and we will tear you down.